Good evening. Please open your hymn books and please stand and open up to hymn number 543. Hymn number 543. We're going to be singing the first and third verse of Love Lifted Me. Hymn number 543. Sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea turned my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Welcome to People's Baptist Church, the friendly church in the universe. Love lifted me. And we see the boys over there were lifting themselves, amen. But we need God to uplift us, amen. Can I get it, amen? amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you once again, Lord, for this just a wonderful gift of salvation. Father, we ask now that you would join us on our Wednesday night Bible study. We, Father, we need you. We want you here in Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. Please open up your hymn book another time to hymn number 284. Hymn number 284, and we sing in the first and fourth verse of A Shelter in the Time of Storm, hymn number 284. The Lord's our rock, in Him we had a shelter in the time of storm, secure whatever shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, rock divine, oh, refuge near, a shelter in the time of storm. Real quickly, uh, a reminder for this Friday, we have phase one at 7 o'clock in the youth apartment basement. Um, also, a reminder for this Sunday, we have enrichment with Pastor Dingus. For the guys, the ladies, we have something else planned for you. Um, where basically the guys are going to be learning how to repair holes in a drywall. Long story short, I think it's going to be a lot more exciting than that. But, um, you know, to keep it a little bit more um, sophisticated tonight, basically they're learning how to repair drywall holes. But... Um, I have no idea exactly how Pastor plans on doing that, so that should be very interesting. Uh, they might be swinging hammers away. I'm not sure. Um, all I know is I will be keeping a safe distance, but I will also very much be there to be entertained. So uh, 7 o'clock this Friday for Phase 1 and Enrichment next Sunday. Guys with Pastor Dingus. Thank you. 
Amen. I, I'm just going to follow up something he said. I know the pastor, when he did it, faced uh, one activity with climbing ladders. When he first mentioned it, I thought that was the most boring thing that you could ever do. Like, who does not know how to climb? Am I right? Who, who cares? But let me tell you, it was one of the best lessons. Not because he's here, but it was. It was one of the best lessons that, that I've ever heard for climbing ladders. So he did a great job. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be there. I'm looking for a sledgehammer, dynamite, you know, and make a hole in the wall. Anyway. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. Open enrollment for North Jersey Baptist Academy. So there's about three months left in our school uh, from kindergarten to 12th grade. And I just want you guys to pray about it. Pray about it if you want to put your a son or daughter or young uh, little person in a Christian school. But unless you want, um, you know, drag queens weeding to your kids, you know, you can go to public school. Hey, listen, that's your choice, but pray, because let me tell you something, public school is not what it used to be when I was growing up. It's really out of whack and crazy, so we have something here. Now, it is a, um, there is a test that you have to take, and there is a vetting process. They have to go through the deacon board, and uh, they have to pick everybody, and we're limited with room. So the faster you decide or the faster you register, the faster we could put you through the process to see if you can make it. So just pray about it. I'm just letting everybody know way ahead of time. Obviously, we have the summer and the next three months as school finishes. But I'm pray about it. See what God lays in your heart. And if you want to go to public school and drag queens, tell your kids how to wear high heels, or do you want to go to a fundamental Christian school Amen. where they're going to teach you about God? Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, please remember the prayer meetings after the Bible study tonight. The ladies meet here in the ladies' changing room, and the men meet in the trailer in the middle room. Uh, parents, please watch your kids uh, starting at 8.30. Remember, remember that they're in your hands after that. All right, a quick announcement concerning our uh, building on 14 Joyce Lane. Uh, of course, this has been something that we've been sort of hashing through in a sort of, you know, uh, how can I say, we, we, this is not something we normally go through, so we're not uh, uh, very familiar with the process. But right now, uh, where we are is we've had the architect draw up the, the drawings, and we've gone back and forth and back and forth, and we've pretty much got it down to where uh, we're, uh, we've made it where uh, we're going we're gonna to be able to get the maximum square footage, if you will, out of that property. We, we're designing uh, a three-story building with 7,400 square feet, which is quite a large building. And uh, we're at the point now where we're going to have engineers start to uh, draw up uh, the plans for the materials and the actual um, building itself. So we're going to have structural engineers, a mechanical engineer, and a civil engineer, if needed, uh, start uh, putting together the plans so that we can present that to the town. And so I'm just asking you to pray for us as we go forward with this. And uh, probably in the next month or so, we're going to have something to present to you uh, to show you what our vision is. And then you're going to need to vote on that. And uh, again, so that we can go forward with this. It's been uh, about eight months now. And uh, of course, we've kind of you know, because we kind of were very surprised when it happened, uh, it just took us a while to kind of regroup, think about what should we do, what could we do, what would be the best thing to do. And so again, we've just had a lot of options to sift through, but we're starting to narrow down exactly what uh, would be best for us uh, for the um, uh, elementary department and also the, the homeschool co-op. And so again, that's where we are right now. We're starting to get something that we can present to you. So uh, please be on the lookout for that uh, shortly. Uh, if you look in your bulletin insert, there's different things going on. We have the College and Career uh, Homeless Ministry this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Please help out with that if you'd like to donate any toiletries to that. Downstairs in uh, Super Church, uh, they're going to be covering missionaries for the next month, uh, the month of uh, March. And so what they're doing is they're uh, covering a current missionary and a missionary of the past each month. And then the kids uh, earn what they call Super Dough. It's, it's kind of like imaginary money for good behavior, for bringing their Bible, bringing visitors, and so forth. And what they're doing this month, the kids are going to be donating all their um, uh, super dough. It's not real money, remember, to uh, the missionaries. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take that super dough and we're going to exchange it for real money uh, here in the adult church on April 2nd. Does that make sense? So the super dough they're earning is not real money, but what we're doing is we're keeping a track of it here. That's in thousands, by the way. Uh, so I think we're up. Uh, make sure your kids behave well, I mean terrible, uh, and uh, take away their Bible. No, just kidding. Uh, but what they're going to be doing is they're going to keep on um, keeping record of their super dough, and then what we're going to do on April 2nd, 
we're going to have a special offering and try to match their super dough with real money for uh, special needs and our missionaries. All right, then the cantata practice, if uh, you'll take note of this, if you're in the uh, choir or if you're part of the Easter cantata, they have practice tomorrow night at 7 p.m. and then Sunday at 4 p.m., so please remember that. Uh, this Sunday night, Brother Julio Rube Jr. is going to be speaking in the evening service, so that's at 6.30, so please uh, remember that. That's coming up this Sunday. Uh, then Saturday, March 25th, we're going to go up to Albany at 9 o'clock, uh, soul winning. I tell Brother Merritt, that's a new church that's less than a year old. Uh, then on Saturday, April 1st, Brother Jerry has a men's activity. Please sign up in the back uh, for skeet shooting. That same day, April 1st at 5 p.m., the College and Courage Ladies Fellowship is going to be at High Street Cuts. Uh, they're going to be going over how to do makeup and hair. And so, again, uh, please see um, Mrs. Brown, I believe, or maybe Mrs. Arias if you have any questions about that. That's for college and career age ladies only. Then on Monday and Tuesday night, April 3rd and 4th, uh, Brother Owens, Jeff Owens, is going to be at Central Baptist Church in Avenel. And so, uh, we t generally speaking, we go down there and uh, we bring a bus down there. Some people go on their own. At 6 o'clock, they have a meal, 7 o'clock, the service. I encourage you to go if you've never heard Brother Owens. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. I've known him many years, and I encourage you to go down and uh, hear him. Uh, again, great man. Uh, his church now is in North Carolina and doing a great work down there. Then the College and Career Revival is on Friday and Saturday, June 16th and 17th. On the back, there's a, a sign-up where you could uh, fast one day per week. So I encourage you to sign up to fast and pray for one day uh, for this revival. That's the yellow page back there. Please sign up tonight if you can. All right, I'm glad you're here tonight. Let's make good use of the hour. Amen? Let's sing another song. Please open your hymn books and please stand one last time as we open up to hymn number 440. Hymn number 440, we're going to sing the first and third verse of Till the Storm Passes By. Hymn number 440. In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes by when the long night has ended and the storms come no more let me stand in thy presence on that bright peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes lord may i dwell with thee when the storm passes by till the storm is over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes by Please remain standing and open your Bibles. We'll be in two different books today, starting in 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, we'll be reading verse 9 and 10. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. First Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 9, let's read. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, 
not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Now let's turn to First Peter chapter three. Will be our final portion of scripture. First Peter chapter three, verses one through four. First Peter chapter three, verses one through four. Let's read. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I pray that you would uh, bless our service here tonight. Help our pastor as he gives a Bible study and continues his uh, topics. I pray that you would uh, continue to help our hearts be willing to accept your word for what it says and um, that we'd be willing to adjust our lives according to uh, your pleasing. I pray you bless our service. Also bless the um, past performance which is to come. Help the kids just to be um, able to perform as they've been preparing and that it can be a blessing to the church today in Jesus' name. came out of light and the darkness ran away the light in the tomb dispelled the gloom when jesus rose that day oh the place where they laid him is empty no power could keep him inside he holds today the keys to the grave jesus came out of sorrow Jesus their Lord had died no reason to live tomorrow the eleven bowed down and cried then Mary ran down the dusty road and Peter come see where he lay for I've seen the master outside the tomb and he is risen today Jesus came out alive and the darkness ran away the light in the tomb dispelled the gloom when Jesus rose that day oh the place where they laid him is empty no power could keep him inside he holds today the keys to the grave Jesus came out alive some presence filled the place jesus appeared in the room thomas declared my lord and my god you've risen today from the tomb jesus came out alive and the darkness ran away the light in the tomb dispelled the gloom when jesus rose that day all the place we Very, very, very good. All right, we've been looking at uh, the outward appearance, and of course, um, we've been looking at different um, controversial areas here. Of course, uh, tattoos, we spoke about beards, we spoke about 
piercings, body modifications, um, uh, unisex dressing. And uh, tonight, I would like to speak for a few minutes about makeup, nail polish, jewelry, and perfume. Wow, so some list there. That's everything there is to life. What else more can a lady want, right? Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for taking care of us, Lord. Please help us to continually just uh, strengthen our testimony, Lord, in the world. Help us, Lord, to continually, Lord, uh, represent you well. Lord, people can only uh, judge by what they see and uh, what they hear. And, and, Lord, we just ask that you help us to continue to be aware of that, that we, again, uh, are here to, uh, in this world to let people know who you are. Help us, Lord, please, tonight. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, all of us uh, think back on uh, Cleopatra. I, I think most of you would be familiar with that. Uh, she, of course, uh, used makeup, and when they uh, excavated Cleopatra, they found out that she was wearing uh, lipstick. Uh, back in the uh, Egyptian uh, culture, they used to make very bright red lipstick two ways. Uh, they would take clay with iron oxide in it, and they'd mix that together and put that on their lips, or they would use the carmine beetle, which is like a soft-bodied bug, and uh, the inside, the its guts are kind of like a bright red. They would squash that and they'd make a paste out of it, and they'd use that for lipstick. Yummy. Uh, but she had this bright red lipstick on. And uh, then, of course, Egyptian women, if you've ever seen uh, King Tut or the, the Egyptian women, they had their eye, eyes lined with, with very dark black. Uh, that was a uh, mixture called coal. It was made out of lead ash, burnt almonds, copper, and animal fat. And so they would take that and use that with a little stick, and they would line their eyes with it. And so again, uh, they wore makeup in, in that culture. And actually, if you look back just about in any culture, uh, the ladies would have some sort of makeup or jewelry or painting their fingernails or hair or so forth. Uh, the Egyptian women actually had a lot of colors, they say, uh, that they would uh, use as eyeshadow. They would use different minerals. They had green. They had blue. Uh, some rich women actually used to use pyrite, uh, which is like a gold a flaking, and they'd actually have gold uh, eyelids. And so they had a lot of things that would enhance their beauty and make themselves look very uh, beautiful. They painted their nails as well. A lot of people uh, that I've met over the years, especially back in the day, uh, would say you know, that they went to a church when they were younger uh, where the women didn't wear any makeup or didn't do anything uh, like that at all. And uh, they would have been taught uh, that it would be wrong to wear uh, nail polish or things like that. So the first question that, um, that I ask in these Bible studies is, is makeup or nail polish or jewelry or perfume, uh, is this a biblical issue? To my understanding, it's really not a biblical issue, uh, to my understanding. And I'll, I'm going to go through some scriptures here tonight. I think what's happened, what, or what happened in the past, and I'm trying to explain or understand why certain religious people were against it, I think what happened is certain people, and I think that their intentions were good, I think that they saw that some people used it in a wrong way, uh, maybe, you know, obviously you have immoral, uh, you know, women doing this more so, and so that what they did is they sort of went to an unspoken uh, extreme, if you will. For example, the Amish are very good examples of this. If you go to the Amish uh, people, you'll notice that the women only dress in certain uh, very drab colors. They'll only uh, wear dark green or dark blue or black. Uh, none of their uh, clothing will have any kind of print on it, uh, nothing very happy, flowers or anything like that, just very, very, very plain clothing. And they do that because they want to be humble. They don't want to have this uh, I'm better than you, or I'm, I'm richer than you kind of mentality. So they all dress the same, so there's no comparison to each other. And although I do, of course, uh, appreciate their sincerity, they're trying to just be simple and not, not be vain or attract attention to themselves, it's not a necessarily a biblical command or a biblical position uh, to wear only uh, certain colors. For example, the old Pentecostals, uh, and this is what I ran into a lot, especially years ago, uh, the, the Pentecostal women would never cut their hair, ever. And their hair would be literally down to their feet. And I remember those days, and I've, I've met people like that. And again, I'm not questioning their heart. I, I think that they're wanting to do right in their own way, but they would wear no makeup at all. They would not style their hair at all. They would not get a perm or style their hair at all. Their hair would be very straight, and uh, they'd wear no makeup, of course. And again, that was the style that they, uh, again, adopted, 
uh, because they just wanted to make sure, I guess, in their own mind that they weren't vain or you know, attracting attention to themselves. For example, in certain congregations like Orthodox Jewish or Amish, uh, in the church, they would have the men sit on one side and the ladies on the other side. Again, why? Because they don't want to be distracted by you know, the opposite gender or whatever while they're focusing on the Lord. And again, I appreciate that. I think that's good. That's why we separate the prayer meetings. Uh, I, I prefer, although again, it's not a biblical position either, but I do prefer the ladies praying separately and the men praying separately simply because they could be a little more, more honest with confessing their faults one to another. Uh, but it's, it's actually scriptural. In the Bible, numerous times people pray together. Uh, but to be honest with you, again, it's not a Bible position that I can see. Like I said, uh, in their way of thinking, because some of these things, namely makeup especially or polishing nails or whatever, was used in a worldly way, for example, Jezebel in the Bible, there are examples of women using it in an immoral way, and they were like actually promoting immorality. Uh, they sort of had the idea, well, you know what, if uh, wicked women d did it to some extent, then we'll go the safe extreme to the other extreme and just not do it at all. And so again, I, I, I think that's why they would have that position not to use makeup at all. But if you look in your Bible there, look in Genesis chapter 24, um, and I, I hate to disappoint uh, the men here because I think some of you men were hoping that I would say that, you know, you shouldn't buy your wife jewelry. And I could have made some money tonight because they offered me uh, uh, 20 bucks if I uh, said that. No, just kidding. But uh, the truth is, in the Bible, you'll see uh, godly people as well, uh, for example, wearing jewelry or giving jewelry to a loved one. And so again, uh, so, so I'm sorry, men, but it's still, diamonds are still a girl's best friend. It's, you know, Genesis chapter 24, verse number 22. Genesis chapter 24, uh, this is Eliezer, of course, looking for a bride for Isaac. And in Genesis chapter 24, verse 22, the Bible says there, Genesis chapter 24, verse 22, and it came to pass as the camels had done drinking, uh, Rebecca had, of course, uh, brought water up from the well for all the camels, uh, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two what, bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And so he gave her these gifts of uh, earrings and bracelets. In verse 47, verse 47 of the same chapter, uh, he goes, of course, to the father and talks to them. And he says, I asked her and said, Whose daughter art, art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, who, whom Milcah bare unto him. And I put the earrings upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And so again, uh, this was a, a gift to her uh, from Eliezer, and it was received, and it was something uh, apparently very appropriate. Verse 52 of the same chapter, verse 52. And it came to pass that when Abram's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. <clears throat> and so you see here that he gave her jewels of silver and gold and, and bracelets and earrings. And th those were typical gifts uh, for somebody that loved somebody. And so men, there you have it. We know if you love your wife or not. Exodus chapter 11. Exodus chapter 11. But uh, again, in the Bible, we see that many times there was an exchange of jewelry or that kind of thing. Exodus chapter 11, verse 1. Exodus chapter 11, verse 1. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 11, verse number 1. The Bible says there, And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. When, you shall, uh, when he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. Again, here God uh, told them to uh, ask for these things. They had, of course, worked for them for many years, and this was indirectly payment for what they did. But again, they were given jewels of gold and of silver. Look in Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. My point is that in the Bible, uh, numerous times, these things were mentioned in a good connotation. Uh, there was nothing sinful about it or something that uh, would, would make us think that they need to, to limit that in some way for some reason. Proverbs chapter 31. Okay, Proverbs chapter 31, of course, is the virtuous woman as we speak about her, her, her woman, I'm sorry, her husband, safely trusts in her. And in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 21, Proverbs 31, verse 21, 
The Bible says she's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with what? She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and what? Purple. And of course, these are very beautiful things. Silk, purple, scarlet, beautiful things. Uh, tapestry is interesting. In Proverbs chapter 7, verse 16, I'll just read it for you there. Um, the Bible says there, Proverbs 7, verse 16, it says, I've decked my bed with coverings of tapestry. So uh, the Proverbs 31 woman had beautiful clothes, flowing, gorgeous things, and her husband bought her those things. And so again, husbands, if you love your wives, I hate to tell you this, but she needs to have beautiful silk tapestries to wear. She needs to have these things. It's necessary. The Bible says so. <laughs> Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Song of Solomon, chapter 1. If you turn two chapters or two books past Ecclesiastes there, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, here um, speaks about the relationship with a husband and a wife. In Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse number 9. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse number 9. Uh, here, uh, the uh, husband is, is praising the wife, and in chapter 1, verse 9, he says, I have compared thee, O my love, to a company of horses in Pharaoh's chariots. Thy cheeks are comely with rolls, rows of what? And thy neck with chains, plural, of gold. This is getting rough, guys. Rows of jewels. Not just a jewel, rows. And not just one chain, but chains of gold. We will make thee borders of gold with studs of silver. While the, the king sitteth at his table, uh, my spikenard, now that's perfume, sendeth forth the smell thereof. So uh, again, here the husband praises her, and when he praises his wife, he mentions that she has beautiful jewelry. And uh, women love beautiful things made of gold and silver and, 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 and precious stone. We all know that. And uh, her spikenard, or the perfume she's wearing, is very attractive to her husband. If you look in verse 15, he says there, verse 15, Behold, thou art fair, my love, behold, thou art fair, thou hast dove's eyes. We ought to make our wives beautiful, and we ought to make our wives feel beautiful. And again, this is just an expression of love, but the truth is in the Bible, it's a very good thing when women had, uh, again, uh, jewels, and they had, uh, again, uh, bracelets and so forth. Look in Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. So in the Bible, we see many times uh, this matter of uh, jewelry and, and so forth and making yourself beautiful as a good thing. It's not, you know, God doesn't, <laughs> God doesn't encourage us to be as ugly as possible. And uh, so <laughs> I do that without trying. But uh, the truth is we, we, we ought to make ourselves, and, and this goes for men too. This is a little bit directed towards women tonight. But men, you ought to shine your shoes, and you ought to dress sharp, and you ought to comb your hair, and you ought to take a shower once in a while. Uh, you ought to do those things, and that your wife would really appreciate that too. And so again, the Bible speaks about us taking care of ourselves and looking good to our spouses, and uh, that, that's, that's biblical as well. Ezekiel chapter 16, starting in verse number 8. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse number 8. God is speaking here to Jerusalem as a husband would to a wife, and he compares that relationship uh, to that. In Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 8, he says, Now when I passed by thee, I looked upon thee. Behold, thy time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Then washed I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also with embroidered work. Again, beautiful uh, uh, clothing like we saw last week. And shod thee with badger skin. Again, very Luxurious, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with what? And I put what? Bracelets upon thy hands, and a what? Chain on uh, thy neck, and I put a jewel on thy forehead, and what? Earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Thou wast, uh, thus wast thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and embroidered work, and thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil. And, and that's not Wendy's, okay? And thou wast exceedingly what? Beautiful. And thou didst prosper into a kingdom. So there's nothing wrong with being beautiful. There's nothing wrong with helping your wife become beautiful. And so the Bible speaks about that to do the very best that we can. Now, I want to take a few minutes here uh, to look at those verses that are sometimes used um, to say that uh, makeup should not be worn or, or uh, so forth. First Timothy chapter 2, Brother 
Julio read it a few minutes ago, First, first Timothy chapter 2. Um, and I do believe that we ought to not make this more important than it is, and that's the theme of these verses, uh, that outward beauty is not as important as heart beauty. Uh, but that's really what it's teaching. It's not saying don't wear makeup, don't do your hair. It's not saying that, and I'll explain that in a few minutes here. But these would be the verses sometimes they use to say, well, women shouldn't do any makeup, they shouldn't do their hair, they shouldn't look, you know, attractive at all. And that's, that's just not, that's not, that's not even rational, really. Uh, we want our wives to be beautiful and, and so forth. We want them to be modest, but we want them to be beautiful. 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse number 8. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 8. And I'd like to make a statement here. The Bible says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that who? Women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. If you want to know the spiritual character of a church, look at the men's prayer meeting and look at how the women dress. That's what the Bible's talking about here. If, if we have a good church, the men will be praying and the women will be modest. And so, again, God puts those two together. They, they, they do go together because they're both spiritual issues. And uh, this whole thing of, again, how we dress is, is again, I'm, I'm not saying it's as important as our heart because it's not, but it is important that we, again, make sure that we portray our church well. We have unsaved people coming here all the time. And uh, our church is not designed, if you will, to be seeker-friendly, if you will. Uh, people come here to see what real Christians look like and act like and how we treat each other and how we respect each other and how we don't put a stumbling block in front of each other. And so the world needs to come into the church and, and see what Christianity is all about. And so we ought not be like the world. Men ought to be able to come here and say, boy, this is, this is very, very, uh, there's a lot less temptation here than there is out there, right? And people ought to admire the way we treat each other and, and we treat each other, like I said, with, with uh, encouraging each other and strengthen each other and help each other to strengthen our marriages and so forth. But in 1 Timothy chapter 2, let's look in verse number 9 again. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, um, the Bible directs this towards the ladies uh, here in verse number 9. It, it says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So first of all, the Bible says that women adore themselves. The Bible does say we're supposed to adorn ourselves. I'm talking about women now. Uh, that word there uh, is cosmeo, and I'll talk about that in a minute. That's where we get the word cosmetics from. Uh, adorn, the Greek word is cosmeo. It means to decorate yourself, garnish yourself, trim yourself. Basically, you're planning ahead to make yourself look nice. You're planning ahead to make the right presentation. That's what it means to adorn. It's like to decorate. Uh, like you put a uh, beautiful trim in a, in, a, in a fancy living room or, you, or, or something along that line. It's, it's a decorating, adorn yourself with modest. That's the word cosmeos. It means to be orderly, proper, decent, if you will. So the Bible says here basically uh, adorn yourself modestly, which means decorate yourself decently, decorate yourself appropriately, uh, decorate yourself the way, again, that you'll make the right impression on people. Uh, basically, our outward appearance, our decoration, basically sends out a signal to everybody about, again, uh, what kind of person you are. Uh, men, when you come to church and you're dressed up and you're looking sharp and you, know, you obviously took some time to get ready, you're sending out radar saying, I'm doing something important. And we should dress our best for church. We should dress our best for church. We should dress our best for church. You say, I don't have a tie. Don't worry about it. Just come without the tie. But we should dress our best for church. If you have a tie, you ought to wear it to church. Why? Because we're sending out a signal. Again, uh, we're dressing appropriately. We're dressing in the right way. And the Bible says here that your decoration, your adorning for women sends out that message to people. We ought not wear anything that would say we're not planning to behave godly. In other words, let me put it positively. We ought to adorn ourselves in such a way that says everybody, we are going, we're planning to behave ourselves in a godly way today. We have good morals. Uh, I am serving the Lord. I am trying to honor God. Our adornment basically says to everybody, this is what I'm planning to do today. And our adornments pretty much tell people that. When you see the young people with their ripped jeans that comes from the punk rock culture uh, and their, their legs are sticking out, you're basically saying, this is what I'm going to do tonight. It's pretty obvious. That's what they're saying to everybody. 
And they're basically saying, saying to the opposite gender, hey, if you want somebody to sin with, here I am, I have my ripped pants. And, and so they're sending out a signal to people that that's what kind of morals they have and that's what kind of person they are. The Bible says here in verse number 9, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness. That basically means this, that I will not break the bounds of propriety. If you ask me to step across a line that of right and wrong, I'm not going. That's what that word means, shameface. They have some honor. They have some dignity. I'm not doing something that's going to dishonor uh, my, my body. So uh, shameface, it means I'm going to stay on the innocent side. Uh, adorn yourself with shamefacedness and sobriety. Sobriety means I have a sound mind. I'm self-restrained. I'm not silly. I'm not giddy. I'm not sinful. I am serious about life, and I'm not going to be motivated by passion or lust. And so sobriety means I'm serious about my life, and I have a plan for my life. And so the Bible says here that women ought to adorn themselves with modest apparel, which what, what does it do? It lets people know I'm not going to step across a sinful line, and I am serious, and I'm not, I'm not kind of going to follow my passions or my emotions. Then in verse number 9, it says, not with braided hair uh, or, or gold or pearls or costly array. Okay, so this is right here where people will say, well, so the Bible says don't wear gold, silver, and don't braid your hair. But we got to look at the whole context of the verse here. God is trying to get along a bigger truth because a lot of women were saying, well, I'm doing my hair, I'm doing my makeup, that means I'm good. No, we need to check the heart to make sure you're good. The heart is the most important part of a man and a woman. Amen? Verse number 10 is the key. So the Bible says don't think that just gold, pearls, and costly array makes you look good. But instead, which becometh women professing godliness, if, in other words, this is a good woman here that wants to portray the uh, picture or, or give the impression of being godly with good works. God says a godly woman uh, is not just saying I'm a good woman because I took time to do my hair and I have jewelry on, but actually she's adorned with good works. She's decorated her life. She's decorated her testimony her name is based on the good things she does for other people. She's kind, she's loving, she's helpful, she's gracious, uh, she, she's merciful. So here's a godly woman. Oh, you mean the one with the nice hair, the one with the gold, the one with the pearls? No, no, the one that has done many good works. That is the most beautiful woman there is, uh, and that's the best way to adorn your testimony. If you think you can make yourself beautiful by spending a lot of money, again, uh, that, that's, that's what it's trying to address. That's not the case here. Nothing is so beautiful than a woman with a good heart. A godly woman would be best known not for her gold or her braided hair, but for her good works, serving the family. The Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, again, serving the Lord, acts of compassion to the poor, acts of empathy. Again, not the outside sensuality or sexiness or, again, attracting attention to herself, but rather the good work she does for others. The outward should not be the main focus but the spirit of a person is the most important part of them. So that's what the Bible's teaching here. The focus on life should be, again, not good looks, but a good name. Amen? The beauty that a Christian woman should desire is godliness and to accomplish good works. True adornment is good works, the ornaments of the heart. A good Christian woman's value comes from her good life. A woman's modesty and beauty comes from the inside out. Just because we do the outside, again, doesn't automatically mean that we're done. We need to make sure our heart is right. We need to have the right spirit. Amen? And, and that's what, what it's teaching overall. When we uh, pay more attention to the outside than the inside, something's wrong. And that's the stress here. A lot of times, okay, how much time, men and women, do you spend taking care of the outside? Okay, now how much did you take care how much time did you take care of your inside, your heart? See, and that's where we get wrong. A lot of times we spend a lot of time on the outside, and the inside is just, you know, the same as it always is. And we think we're ready, but we're really not. So again, it's important for us to remember that the inside is more important than the outside. Amen? The Bible does not specifically say here, do not braid your hair. That's illogical. The Bible does not specifically say, don't wear jewelry, or don't wear gold, don't wear pearls, don't wear costly array. But know that these things cannot make up for good works. Okay, Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, very quickly. Titus chapter 2. 
another place that's sometimes used uh, kind of out of context where they say, well, you shouldn't braid your hair, you shouldn't wear jewelry, or you shouldn't wear makeup or something along that line. Titus chapter 2, verse number 3. Titus chapter 2, verse number 3. You all got it? Titus chapter 2, verse number 3. The Bible says there, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh what? Holiness. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Okay, very quickly, the emphasis here, uh, ladies, is holiness, to be holy. Why? Because when you're holy, you can do holy works. You could do good things. The Bible encourages ladies to be sober. Again, same thing, uh, spiritually disciplined, not reacting to emo with emotion. Discreet, again, that means staying in a safe place, making sure that you don't uh, cause any kind of temptation or cause any kind of sin in your life or someone else's life. To be chaste, that means pure, clean, innocent, clear with God. Um, good, verse 5, right, beneficial, helpful. Why? And this is the big thing. Why, why should we be careful of these things? At the end of verse 5, it says that the word of God be not blasphemed. We have to understand that each and every one of us has a part in what the world thinks of Christianity. People watch you at the office. People watch you at the football game. People watch you when you uh, deal with your children. People are always watching us. And they make an impression about what Christianity is like based on what they see because they're human beings. That's all they can judge by. They don't know our hearts. We need to show our hearts on the outward. Amen? So important uh, to realize that our testimony is uh, part of Christianity. First Peter, first Peter, very quickly. First Peter, chapter three. First Peter, chapter three. This was the other verse that Brother Julio read. Sometimes is used, I think, uh, in a in a um, kind of a incorrect way to say that uh, you shouldn't wear jewelry or shouldn't wear makeup. But that's really, again, not not the main point. The main point again is very similar. That's not a true woman's beauty. A true woman's beauty is, again, how she lives as a Christian. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 1, you all got it? It says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not in the word, that they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. By the way, conversation doesn't mean you're talking. It means your lifestyle, your manner of lifestyle. So here is a woman with a wicked husband. Boy, that's most of you here tonight, isn't it? Uh, Here's a woman with a wicked husband. How do you win him over? You don't nag him. You don't boss him around. You don't, you don't make, give him a guilt trip. The Bible tells you how to deal with him. Verse 2, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear or respect, they watch you and they see how you, you treat them. Who's adorning, again, same word there, who's adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plating of the hair or of wearing of what? Gold, or on putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament, again, the adorning, the ornament, of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. In summary, you could do a lot more uh, to change your husband by having a meek, meek and quiet spirit, by just having the right kind of attitude and having a respect and a, and a, and a, and a godly heart that brings him to shame that puts him to shame, that causes him to be convicted. A woman's influence over her husband is extremely great. And so this is how, again, God wants it to be done, though, because you don't want to diminish a man's ego. You don't want to conquer him, because otherwise you're going to ruin his manhood. And so how are you going to deal with a guy that's sinful, okay? Maybe he's not saved. Maybe he's saved, but he's living an ungodly life. The Bible says in verse 2, you have a chaste conversation coupled with fear. Chaste means a... Uh, a pure manner of living, moral purity, coupled together with, with respect for him, though he may not live in a respectful way, you still respect his position. And by doing that, you put him in a place where he realizes, wow, if, I'm, if, I, uh, if I don't straighten out, I'm going to let her down. And, and, and you have to be wise with this in dealing with men because so many times, you know, men, you know, men get harder when their wife tries to constantly... Uh, you know, uh, preach to them. And so you have to kind of come around a different way. And the Bible says here, have a chaste conversation or manner of life coupled with respect. Verse 3, it says, whose adorning, here again is the 
crucial spot, whose adorning decoration, let it not be the outward adorning of plating of hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. Again, th this is not going to change things. Uh, again, this is all fine, but it's not going to change anything. What's the adorning? Verse 4 is the adorning that God recommends. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. That's the inward you, the, the, the part that he can't see in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. That meek and quiet spirit that you have towards him will bring him to, to conviction, will bring him to be humiliated without you saying a word uh, by you living a godly life no matter what he does. Amen? And so that meek means a humble and quiet means a peaceable. You don't argue. You have a spirit that he just can't resist. You have a spirit that it doesn't lead him to fight. He, in a sense, he'll actually give in to you quicker if you have that adorning of the heart rather than the outside. Pastor Knickerbocker said, since people cannot see your heart, uh, our heart, they can get a better idea of what we believe about Bible morality by how we dress. Wearing certain clothing does not save us or cause us to lose our salvation, but it does help everyone else to see that our lives have been changed by Christ. It is a testimony of the marvelous grace of God. Amen? And so to my understanding here, Peter's saying that what makes a person beautiful comes from their heart, not from their gold or their pearls or their outward adorning. And that, again, the heart is the most important thing. So these two scriptures, and I guess as the kids here, uh, what these two scriptures are emphasizing is not that we should not dress on the outside. It's not saying don't do these things, but don't think that those things are a substitute for godliness or holiness or having the right spirit. The, the, the main thing is the heart. And that's what the, the scriptures are trying to emphasize. The heart's the most important thing. If your heart is right, everything else is going to come out of that. Don't think that the outside, the facade, is, an, is a substitute for having the right heart. So what I'm saying is this. To decorate the outside is fine. But don't think that that's the only thing that we have to decorate the right way. We have to decorate this part here. And that's far more important. And so that's the emphasis there. So I don't believe the Bible teaches against you know, makeup and jewelry and so forth. It's just saying that that's not what the great greatness of a woman is. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much again for uh, giving us a chance to look handsome or look uh, fair, as you called it in the Bible, Lord. And it's certainly uh, a wonderful thing to uh, do our best to look good to our spouses and to stay as good looking as we can. Help us, Lord, in, in every way that we can to be modest and be appropriate. Thank you for the boys and girls and the things they've learned. Help us, Lord, to Again, continue to see our children grow up in, uh, in your ways. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Here. matter, Shanti. This is just a very bad day. My little sister got into my stuff again. Uh-oh, what did she do? Well, first she tore up the really long math worksheet I just finished. Then she pulled some pages out of my library book, so now I have to pay a fine. How could she do that? Oh, that's not all she did. Uh-oh, what else? She, she got into my secret candy stash and in my favorite. I can't imagine. How did that make you feel? How would it make you feel? I don't think I could ever forgive her. 
Wait a minute, Ashanti. You have to forgive her. Remember the verse we learned in Pack Club this month? You're right, Frankie. We're supposed to be kind and forgive others. But what my sister did was terrible. How could I ever forgive her? Because, because God, God has, has forgiven, forgiven you. you. Thank you for coming to our to our performance. Um, I thought I had everything down packed. Now I get nervous. Um, thank you, parents. Thank you, uh, pastor, congregation. It's it's always a, a thrill to to see the, to see to see these peewees grow and, and the patch grows. And and this this week, I mean this this month, we've uh, the the peewees learned a super valuable lesson on how God God forgives us, He loves us, and He cares for us no matter what. No, uh, no matter who, who we are or what we can do. Speaking with a sailor, Kevin Ibrahim, about, about this, he said, wow, Brother Charlie, I, like, I, I, I love this lesson. Do you think that teenagers get the same love and care? I said, no. But I'll, but I'll check the Bible to see if, 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 the, if uh, God loves them the same way. And... Um, 
teenagers, what, what, I, what, I, what I found was um, God, God loves you, God cares for you, and will always watch over you no matter what, no matter what you can do. Yes, God loves and cares for the teenage girls too. It was in there. Exodus 4.10 tells us, 10.11 uh, tells us, and even though Moses was, Moses was whining and complaining, um, let's, let's, let's look at that for a second. Exodus 4.10, 4, 11. Garbage, page 59 in your Bible. And, and Moses said unto the Lord, O my, o, o my Lord, I am not allocate neither hetero for nor, nor since thou, thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of slow of tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who had ma made my man's mouth? Who maketh the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? That's that's that 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 means that means a, a lot, teenagers. Um, for you know, when when you say I can't do that, God made you. He knows you could do it. God asks you, you do it. I can't I can't wake up early. I can't speak. I I I I am shy. I I I can't memorize all the Bible verses. I I I I can't be a bus worker. I I I I can't I can't uh, speak speak a bunch of uh, to a bunch of strangers about to to get to a bunch of strangers how to get to heaven. You, you see, Brother Julio, I am not made that way, the teenagers say. Exodus 4.10 tells us differently. Hmm. I guess what you're saying is that God made a big mistake when he made you? Hmm. I need four, I need four ushers to take this pulpit up there. We're going to preach this message. <laughs> Pat, Pat, uh, <laughs> you know what? These two ushers got to repent first. Teens, teens, this one is for free. Straight out of God's treasure box. God knows it's hard. God knows it's difficult. And it's hard to understand. But stay close to the, to the people that God has placed around you. Sorry, Jarvis. Jarvis. Stay close to the people that God has placed around you, not the people you have placed around you. Mrs. Munoz will give out the awards. Mrs. Munoz. Thank you for the PA not stopping the song till the very end. Okay, it's time for us to give our certificates for attendance, our pins for devotions, and to announce our Super Sailor of the Month. Thank you, teenagers. Very first, four devotions this, this month. J.B. Cueto. For devotions and attendance, Arthur Onofre. Hannah Morales. Hannah. Peewee's wave. Hannah, wave. Keep going. That's not Hannah. That's all right. Hosanna Morales. <laughs> Lillian Guerra, Kimberly Ortiz, Jacob Kahn, Eliel Vega, Natali Martino, Chloe Zvetkova, Kevin Ibrahim, and Mia Mencia. Ms. Kiki is going to announce our Super Sailor of the Month. Okay, our Super Sailor this month uh, has perfect attendance. Uh, I am very proud of this particular sailor or sailorette uh, because this uh, year, not only do the Peewees have their memory verse, their makeup memory verse, but their makeup makeup memory verse. So this particular sailor or sailorette wanted to say all three on the first week to get three things out of the treasure box. So we had to make sure we told them to save one for the following week. This particular sailor or sailorette has come very far because at the beginning we 
could not get anything out of this sailor or sailorette to speak, to participate. The spirit has grown tremendously. And you could definitely tell by the enthusiasm during the play. Uh, and that is Miss Chloe. Thank you very much. So uh, this month, as uh, Captain Charlie said, uh, we learned about forgiveness. And as you could tell from the memory verses and uh, from the song, uh, forgiveness is very, very important. Uh, we should all learn to forgive anyone because we can remind ourselves of how God has first forgiven us. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 36, Be therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Uh, if you'll think with me for a moment, imagine if God didn't forgive us of our sins? How would our lives be if God didn't forgive us of our sins? Or imagine if, uh, as sometimes people will say, I, I want what I deserve. Imagine if all of us had exactly what we deserved. But I'm thankful that God is a gracious and that God is a merciful God. And so we learned this month about uh, forgiveness, about uh, what we are supposed to do to forgive others, and of course how God has forgiven us. And then we learned tonight and this past week about what if we do wrong? We are supposed to ask for forgiveness, and we're not supposed to let that go. Let not the sun go down upon our wrath. And so we learned about forgiveness, and that's a very, very important uh, thing because the only alternative is bitterness. So forgiveness is very, very important. So that's what we learned this month, but this time we're going to go right into our awards for this month. Miss Katie? All right, so all of these uh, awards that we're going to be giving out tonight are for both attendance and for devotion so all of the ones that are getting one we're able to continue and be consistent in both of those for this whole month so first we have thomas martino <laughs> valerie mancia nicholas diaz kevin saul riley paul michael ford maddie de los santos Mia Law, Kimali Ortiz, Rebecca Khan, Izzy Khan, Isaiah Sagastumi, Gabriella Rube, Frankie Smith, Ashanti Santos, Alicia Santos, and Arthur Smith. And now Miss Lena is going to come announce our Super Sailor of the Month. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, the Sailor of the Month this month has some very special qualities to mention. Uh, this Sailor has been the fastest to listen when Brother Jake addresses the kids. That's according to Brother Jake. <laughs> um, this sailor also has completely completed one of the hardest challenges we have that's memorizing 14 verses in Psalm 27. And only three kids have done it. This is one out of three. Uh, so that's a tough one. And of course, they have completed all their devotions um, and their memory verse, their makeup memory, their extra makeup memory verse. And another special thing about this sailor uh, they are one of the sharpest dressers in our patch club. This sailor even has some spiffy new shoes on right now. <laughs> this sailor is Arthur Smith. <laughs> All right, we have one uh, last announcement. This is something special and unique that I'm going to make uh, this announcement, and then we'll do this dismissal for prayer. Uh, thank you for uh, your patience. So this uh, past month, 
or uh, this past year we've been doing uh, skills competition. This is for the Patch Club, the third through sixth grade. Uh, we've done many different ones, Bible scribing, Bible memorization. Uh, we've done uh, a art competition. This past month, what we did, we did something unique, is they uh, were to write a play that then is going to be used next month for the Patch Play. So this is what we call playwriting skills competition. And uh, so I have um, the winner. Uh, not every single, you don't have to do it. It's for whoever would like to do it. But then obviously whoever does win will get to win some fabulous prizes. And so uh, the winner for our patch playwriting champion was, drum roll please. All right, hold on one second. I got to say one more thing. Myself, Miss Katie, Brother Mike, Miss Lena, we were the judges, and it was so hard that we ended up choosing two, so there's going to be two plays next month, so that's special. And so our winners are, and when I call your name, come down, Isaiah Sagastumi and Maddie De Los Santos. All right, come choose something from there. There you go. Small things. All right, so they did a really good job. Here's your certificate. And so next month, you're going to get to hear their plays. Uh, we're going to act out their plays. So at this time, we're going to pray uh, for dismissal. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for allowing us to teach your children, Lord. Lord, thank you for, for loving us the way you do. Uh, may we all have a safe ride home in your precious name. Amen. <laughs> Walk, 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 walk the Bible way, walk, walk, walk the Bible way.